Let's get ready for the three or four people that are going to be on. Yep. You know what I'd really like to do What's is that? get like a, a sound off or like a um, a thing where we just like Jimmy, like the one I was telling you about that Jimmy Cunha's had said, where it's like mm-hmm. we do like a one minute just the news, boom, 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 yeah, boom, yeah, boom. Yeah. That's it, and then we can discuss about shit. Yeah, but like make it like a segment. Yeah, like you'd, you'd have to have enough news. snippets, I think, to like mm-hmm. warrant that thirty mm-hmm. second, like twenty second riff off kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You gotta like call it like that riff off, whatever you want to call it. But riff uh, off. And then you can go into your main big topic subjects, I guess you can say. Cool. Mm-hmm. Welcome, everybody, to the F Word Podcast. The show, the sorry, the show, the podcast that's still trying to figure out how to do a proper opening. And this was another example of how mm-hmm. not to do one. As I was thinking this week, I was like, there's a lot of titles that we can put it, but this is the number one thing where it's like, I still haven't figured out how to properly introduce the show yeah. that flows well. But either than that, I'm G, and with me is Vass once again. What's up, everybody? It's going to get to the point where I think it's just going to be like the yeah. Beard Bros, yeah. like you and me, just Probably. brothers hosting the podcast. Yeah. Uh, we want to give a shout out to everybody that's been graduating. Yeah. Our, uh, our other brother in arms, Anthony. Yeah. Big Fs. Big now, Fs. Mr. Big Graduate or The Graduate, he has yeah. graduated. Uh, a lot of people are graduating right now. It's exciting from both uh, high schools and universities. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. And it's surprisingly a lot more rare on a global scale. Like everybody that we know graduates from high school and then yeah, goes yeah. to university and stuff. I, I went to university for a year, but it sucked. Yeah. Um, but it's it's still an achievement, I think. Oh, and, absolutely. And it's still an important achievement. And I think it's just one of those things where it's, I don't know. The it, high, it, the high school thing. one is the real kick in the ass kind of thing. Because like it's real world, more or less. Because college is college but no college is real world high school is high school that's right but i'm saying after high school oh after mean, high school yeah 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 yeah. after high school is the kick in the ass whether you decide to do the college route or you just go straight into the workforce you're, you're in real life deal with it yeah that's <laughs> interesting it's almost like it's almost like high school is like think about it as a hallway and before you yeah. get to the hallway it's the grass is green. Everything's nice. You're fun. You're important. Yeah. You're in this small microcosm where you can affect a lot of change. Mm-hmm. And then what it does is it fills your head with all the change that you can affect, but you don't realize that you're just doing it on a small scale. Some yeah. do it on a much bigger scale. For sure. Like those are the, the keeners that are really going out there and doing stuff in their mm-hmm. own spare time. Then you open that door and it's just fire and brimstone yeah. and all of the evils of the world. It's like that. The, <laughs> it's like a Pandora's box and just... Life just like the first thing you do, you don't get a greeting card. Hey, welcome yeah. to real life. You don't get a box of chocolates or candies or flowers. Yeah. You get punched right in the face. And then essentially it's just a matter of you trying to recover from that punch. Yeah. A little bit dazed. Yeah. You're like the, there's a there's the flashes like, you know, when something happens and you're like, well, I'm seeing like spots everywhere. Mm-hmm. Same kind of deal. That's life. That's real life. That's true. But it's an extreme one. But yeah. Well, I, I, and I look at it as like you. My, positivity that True. I talked about last week. On the other hand, you can look at it like you step out the door and the step's just a little too big, you know? You know how you have like your your body can tell if a step's too long Definitely. or too short. Especially when you're That's going That's what down happens it. and you trip up. You're like, what the heck was that? And then there you go. Are you going down the stairs down. or are you going up? Typical, let's say you're saying you're going out that door, right? Well, out the door, you take a step down. Think of like, I'm just thinking of like a house. You're Unless it's a, a stairway down. to heaven. And it's a step up, but there it's less like A big step up. Less li- it's, you're less likely to trip going up, more likely going down. I think. Do you have any advice for the graduates out there that are listening? Oh, I don't think I want to go down that road. I don't know. I never went to the the college route. I did the workforce and just kind of fell into the the groove for better or for worse. And uh, it's been good. It has mm-hmm. its moments. Mm-hmm. There's always that knot in the back of your head. You're like, oh, maybe I should have gone and done this or whatever. But um, you'll never be truly satisfied 100%. Some people actually do. And good for them. That's amazing. But uh, for someone like myself, I just you fell into these grooves, and it's sometimes a good thing. Sometimes it's a very bad thing. 
But uh, as long as you're happy with the decision you make or you're able to live with it and just keep going on, I think it's the most important thing. You you definitely want to get as much advice as you can get, but ultimately you got to make the decisions for yourself. And that way you can live with it a little bit better. Because I find if someone makes that decision for you and it it doesn't end up panning out, you're going to it's going to feel a lot worse than like, you know what? I did this to myself. I have no one else to blame. Whereas, you know, if someone else told you, Oh, go do this and you just did it and it didn't work out. You're like, well, what the heck? So that's how I see it. Interesting. Yeah. I see it as the great equalizer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't really say I'd have much advice for people because I'm not the advice type. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I like I'll tell people things. Yeah. But I always, I, for the most part, I try to deliver it in a way of like, at the end of the day, you can buy it or you don't have to buy it. I'm not going to try. So you to sell do give you the it. advice, but it's it's more or less. This is my experience, and this is what I did, yeah. and then you take that with how you will. <laughs> yeah, like I remember I was talking to a young person, and I was telling them, this is a little bit of a hardcore way of doing it, but mm-hmm. I said, I'm like, doesn't matter what you're going to do now because life's going to straighten you out regardless on if you want to or not. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on what your background is. It yeah. doesn't matter if you are come in for money or you don't come in for money or whatever. Life is going to straighten you out. And it's one yeah. of those things where you just have to be prepared for it. Mm-hmm. That's I truly believe that because it did that to me. Yeah, You know what I mean? Like I was always good with money, mm-hmm. but it wasn't until I was broke for, I don't know, seven years that <laughs> all of a sudden it was just like, oh, shit. Like yeah. now I really got to like step it up. You know, I'm working. Oh, yeah. Well, when I moved to Calgary, I was working how many hours a day and. I needed 25 out of the 30 or so days, depending on the month, to Mm -hmm. break even. Yeah. And you're working all the time and you got nothing, right? Like, life does that, right? Oh, yeah. Um, The other thing, too, is that more and more people are finding that they can work for themselves. So I think it's a lot of, it's not steering away from the university system or the college system, but most people are able to find successes earlier, like before Mm -hmm. they get there. Like Anthony, for instance. Yeah. He had an Instagram page with 70 to 80, almost 80,000 followers. Mm-hmm. Having the ability to do that mm-hmm. and being able to be accountable for your own stuff mm-hmm. is what could end up launching you and kind of not bypassing, but being yeah. able to get a leg up on stuff. I think the the self starter era definitely has the leg up on this generation of kids. Do you find that like with the social media aspects? And it'll be more. It's already there where it's like yeah. the opportunities where you don't have to do the, let's say the traditional style. You mean you don't have to go to culinary school like I did and then try to cook your way through <laughs> how many years and then all of a sudden drop out because it sucks. Well, that's one. It's facet. a, pa- it's a, that's one job. facet of it. But like, you know, like, okay, I'll even say it, the influencer aspect of it all, which is sure. a little bit of a farce, but it works. At the end of the day, there's a market there. People are able to work with this and, uh, and, you know, make a career out of it. They find their own way with this tech world and all that stuff and it yeah. doesn't have to be through traditional facets it can come after the fact so initially let's say like anthony's page let's say it's definitely lifted off real quick it could have gone even better and amazing and that's it you know? well and it's a life lesson that all of a sudden it's gone yeah for reasons not even of your own doing mm-hmm. right like something as simple as copyright which is like one of the biggest things right now that's plaguing a lot of youtube yeah. channels which is very a lot of other pages yeah, of course times. I get like emails. Everything, everything you do could be copyright. And I, like, okay, I put great. a video out and I used a, uh, I think it was Beethoven sixth or something on mm-hmm. one of my videos yeah. back when I was selling real estate. Like a, it was a parody video when mm-hmm. I was at an open house. And to this day, and this was two and a half years ago, almost three years ago. To this day, I'm getting emails. Oh, your video was flagged for copyright, oh, yeah. and uh, you know we might have to take it down. And then it's happened three times. Exactly the same way. Oh, we're putting on. back on because we found it doesn't affect or anything with the copyright. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. this is a complete waste of my email space. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, this is not a life podcast. No. This is an entertainment, a factual entertainment podcast, F word, which, by the way, some exciting news. I got an email today. The Saskatchewan Podcasting Network is now in its soft launch. Mm. What is the Saskatchewan Podcasting Network? It is a group of podcasts under one branch. Uh, The founder is Dale Richardson, who owns the Talking 306 podcast, or he runs it. And he has combined all the podcasts in Saskatchewan, or a good chunk of them to Mm -hmm. begin with, because it's it's starting from the ground up. And we are very fortunate, fortunate to be... A part of that, and there's a bunch of other podcasts on there for ones that I've heard myself. Yeah. Ones people, 
I've recognized the people that are in them, and I'm like, oh shit, they've got one, mm-hmm. and it's awesome. So uh, if you do have a chance, to, even if you're not from Saskatchewan, go to the SaskatchewanPodcastingNetwork.com or on Facebook or on Instagram. You can find us, uh, links to our our uh, our podcast, and you can go to other ones. And it's uh, this new exciting thing that's happening because a lot of other provinces mm-hmm. are doing it. Also, I forgot to say hello to Arturo. What's up, man? So, uh, anyways, that's what's going on. Uh, So, I guess we're kind of going to be brought to you by the Saskatchewan Podcasting Network or an affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcasting Network. Or it'll be just at your end around where you can find us on the Sask Podcast. It'll be another avenue to find us for sure. Uh, Another thing, we have surpassed 1.6 thousand downloads, or we are like very close to it. So I'm really excited. It's uh, it's over, but on Anchor, it just shows 1.6, but I think it was 1.67 something. So we're almost at the 1.7, so super exciting. If you've ever created something and all you're thinking in your head is like, is anybody going to listen to this? Well... Yeah. Enough people have listened to enough of our episodes yeah. that, uh, you know, we've had at least had 1.6 plus thousand plays yeah. that people have given a shit to even just press play. So that means yeah. a whole lot. We are good, man. How are yeah, you, man, Arturo? Um, and then uh, what else was there? Yeah. So anyways, wherever you're listening from, I hope you're having an awesome, awesome day. I hope you're having a great weekend because uh, it's most likely that you're hopefully you're listening to this on a Saturday. Yeah, uh, a and if not, or it's a long weekend in Canada. Uh, July Fourth of July is coming up, too. So it's people true. in the States is super exciting. It's kind of a really fun time because I went to have you ever gone to the park to go see the fireworks? I have. It's pretty good. It's pretty. Not, it's a so pretty apparently interesting experience where, where we have it in here. At, it's apparently pretty well known and does a good job for the size we are and stuff like that so it does a good job you mean like it draws a lot of people draws in a lot stuff? of people yeah. in um the fireworks used to be a lot better mm-hmm. from what i understand but they have had some recognition that we do a pretty decent job of pyrotechnics and all that stuff so it does draw a crowd every year no matter what there's always stuff going on all day at the park and stuff like that so that's pretty sweet nice uh, arturo says chilling chilling hanging out with the family at the moment well we want to say hello to your family man i hope they're all doing well um, also, I went through some of the other stuff. I this is so the reason I put out on our Instagram, which if you want, you can follow the Effort Podcast on Instagram. The one point six thousand is yeah. because it's the first time I actually saw it. Oh, like I never, like I, I've said before, I don't really check our numbers because yeah, it used yeah. to give me massive anxiety. Um, but then I noticed when I went down to the analytics, fifty one percent of our audience is from Canada. Nice. Thirty seven percent is from the United States. Dope. Three percent is from France. So bonjour. Two percent is from the Netherlands. One nice. percent is from Sweden. Uh, almost one percent is from uh, collectively Dominican Republic, United Kingdom, and Peru. So that's pretty sweet. Fuck yeah! Good range. If you're, if you're from anywhere from there, um, hello. I'm gonna maybe what I'll do is be a little bit proactive and maybe write down some greetings from all those places. Mm-hmm. I don't know that many. Nice. Uh, okay, let's get into it. Sure. Uh, where do we want to start? Where do we want to start? Let's start with Warner Brothers. Go for it. Warner Brothers has a new CEO replacing mm. Kevin, and I apologize for butchering your last name, Tsujihara. And the new CEO is Ann Sarnoff. And I got this report from Deadline. I saw it uh, this past week, which is super exciting. Um, and not because she's a woman. This wom- this This person has been in some pretty high up positions. She was the president of BBC Studios America, uh, oversaw the company's business division in the US, Canada, and Latin America. She shepherded LA Productions, linear and digital program sales and co-productions, home entertainment and licensing. She also led efforts to grow BBC Studios, global brands, Doctor Who, Top Gear, and the natural history brand, BBC Earth. Mm, Nice. She's also, uh, Sarnoff also is board chair of BritBox, where she has guided the development and growth of the direct-to-consumer service which offers U.S. and Canadian customers to largest collection of British television programming, which I'm a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. Some of my favorite shows are BBC shows. Oh, yeah. um, she has done a lot of stuff, and like her resume is outstanding. Well, well deserved getting the CEO position, for sure. Big time. Like That is no joke. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I think I saw something else here, though. She had something to do with the Rugrats which I thought was awesome too. You could find it on Deadline. If you go to Deadline.com, that's where I found this one. So I'm super, super excited. Now, the news revealed Monday comes just more than three months after Kevin 
Tsujihara exited the post amid, amid a closer investigation by parent company Warner Media over alleged misconduct involving an extramarital affair with an actress and subsequent attempts to help her get roles in studio production. Tsujihara, through his attorneys, have denied having any direct role in casting the actress. Hmm. So there seems to be some, you know, there's a reason for the exit. Yep. But based on based on Anne Sarnoff's uh, resume, good on her. Oh yeah, that's some like could be a good uh, good thing for Warner Bros. going forward because they control. Yeah. What do they control? They control like all the Batman franchise and stuff like that. Yeah, they. I mean, they've got their. They've got their. I mean, definitely not as big as Disney, but they've got no. their own stuff. Warner that Bros. Is go a to. Very well TV is though. very big for them yeah. as well, yeah. and for her having some of those again, Doctor Who and Top Gear alone, those could two bring are some huge. different caliber to the whole WB network. So I think so. I, mean, I think it's. I think it's pretty awesome. Um, and again, none of it has anything to do with the fact that she is a woman. Yeah. I don't care if she is a dog with those credentials. Is WB get under her in. any overarching production company? Like, no, I'm they're just sure. their own right now. Well, I, I I'm not sure, but I think with her background mm-hmm. with BritBox, yeah. and the BBC, yeah, I think Warner Bros will actually have a really good affiliation with more of those companies, which is going to be awesome because again. BBC shows are outstanding. The Sherlock uh, series alone. The Sherlock series, Luther, Broadchurch. Um, I think that one's BBC. I don't remember. Yeah. Those are the three specific ones that I'm yeah. I'm a huge, huge fan of. Also, Dark Season 2 is on Netflix. If you remember, haven't seen Dark before, I did a review on it. It's one of the first reviews that I did. It's not a very good review. Um, actually, a lot of my earlier reviews weren't very good. I, this goes back to last week when I said I should have written most of this stuff down. But That's most right. of the time, I wanted to get it out so fast that I just mm. like I watched it, put on the camera, and just started like going off of whatever. And then every time I went back, I'd be like, "It is." But at the Did same time, stuff? I not only missed stuff, but upon like a week after yeah. when I'd review it, I'd be or when I'd review the review, yeah. kind of go over where I could I could do better. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't think that now. I don't think that now. Like, I had time to process it. Yeah. And it's very tough with right off the bat reviews. Like, for me. Well, it's first reaction review, right? So, I mean, at the same time, you look at it differently. If you watch it a second time or you have time to mull over it. Yeah. That's my thing, right? I always, with movies, I like them right away, typically. Like, I'll mm-hmm. always like, man, I can break down. Okay, I didn't like this part. I didn't like this character or whatever it may be. So like your first initial reaction is usually pretty genuine, but you need to sure. delve into it. Like, and that's just an overarching, like call it an overview mm-hmm. reaction. Mm-hmm. And then once you delve into it and, and splice it up and figure it out, then you're like, okay, I like this aspect of it. I didn't like how they did this or blah, blah, blah. So that's, yeah, my, my problem with my review structure back in the day was, um, and this was, I think I did the review. I think that should, the first season came out a year and a half ago or something like that, or yeah. about a year ago. I tried to explain a lot of the details, mm-hmm. but I had yet to fully process them. You're also doing like and non spoiler. It was a non spoiler for sure, but I, I, I was just trying to give context to certain characters and their mm-hmm. names and stuff. Yeah. Which, when I go back, I'm like, didn't need to say that. Didn't need to say that. Didn't need to say that. Not because it was a spoiler, mm-hmm. but because it was almost unnecessary. Meh. But that's again, that's like one guy actually commented today. He's like, "You fucked it, mate." <laughs> <laughs> on the on the comment my guess is he just didn't like the review oh, whatever. um but that is a very good show dark mm-hmm. it's on netflix season two is out right now highly 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 recommended is it a big and wall in between the two seasons i think so because again it was one of my first reviews and we started two yeah. years ago with yeah, reviews probably the other one that is a it's a german show so it's got uh, subtitles yeah, i would go. highly recommend still watching it watch it with the subtitles it it is outstanding performance the other german show because i was like shit some of my favorite shows in the past three years have been german you were shows. in the earlier ages you were ages of uh of the f word podcast you were wholeheartedly more geared towards the foreign films and i think actually there was a reason for that probably because more people weren't into them <laughs> so it was it was two things one i like foreign stuff shows yeah um any any type of show it doesn't matter but two it was also a market on youtube that wasn't being um looked at like there weren't that many people Very reviewing good. foreign stuff yeah and a lot of the comments especially my first one i think that first one hit about like fifty thousand views or something like that mm-hmm. it was for uh what's on it's called money heist but it's actually called la casa de papel yeah I remember that. um a lot of people were like oh cool like i really like i'm curious to see what a non let's say uh, uh, not a person not from that country thinks of this show, it, yeah. or you know, it, um, another one that I really loved 
and so really loved it too is Babylon Berlin mm-hmm. and I hope one. it's still on Netflix that show That's is that outstanding uh, German one it's it's around 1928 or something mm-hmm. uh, it was right before Hitler became chancellor in oh, 1933 okay. like it's it's in those years before that yeah uh, it was like, you know, communists were around Germany. Um, they had gotten beaten down and they, the Versailles Treaty was in effect and everything. And Borderline like nonfiction-ish? Oh, it's it's totally non oh. It's nonfiction. Like it, this, well, sorry. The story is fictional, obviously. Yeah, they have characters and stuff. But are real. Everything that's going on around it yeah. is is very true to at least what I've heard about the war. Yeah. Um, and, and lately I've been listening to a lot of Hardcore history, yeah. like Dan Carlin's hardcore history, mm. and so I've been inundated in a lot of different World War One, World War Two, um, you know, facts from the mm. but the way that he does it. And mm-hmm. if you haven't, and you're a history person, Dan Carlin's hardcore history is the place to go. It is outstanding. I just finished watching Band of Brothers too again. Oh, nice. I still haven't seen that one. It's one of the best uh, army films out there. I, think. I heard. Oh, I heard. Then watch it. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Let's go to your stuff because you just sent it to me. Yeah, uh, people are calling Thor, Bro Thor. That was Thor the MCU. Bro? They're making like an official name for Bro Thor, but I think it should be Bro. The official <laughs> Avengers Endgame MCU name of Fat <laughs> Thor has been revealed as Bro Thor, which nah, it's not necessary to name him. Just call him just, Thor. Well, just to avoid calling him the Dude Thor or. The, like, I, dude Thor kind of yeah. thing. I, but Broar is good, too. Broar is okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, it, it's not necessary. It's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't take him as a bro. Like, I didn't yeah. see him as a bro. The guy's depressed. Yeah. You know, we talked about it last week. What more do I have to lose? Well, you could lose a lot more. Yeah, and yeah. you did. So it's more, it's pretty, I don't know. It's an okay name, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm not really going to call him that. I'm not, I didn't even call him Fat Thor before. Yeah. Um. Would you give him a name? What other name would you give him? I'd Broar. You would just if, call if, him If they're going to go with Bro Thor, I'm like, call it Broar. <laughs> uh, other one, Doctor Doom MCU movie. Noah Hockley. Who's Noah Hockley? Oh, the... Cr- Shit. Yeah. He's the creator and writer of Fargo and Legion. Fargo is outstanding. Yep. At least the first two seasons. Has mm-hmm. confirmed he's been in conversations with the MCU headed yeah. head Kevin Foggy about a Doctor Doom movie. Which is interesting because that goes off what we were talking about, but Keanu joining the MCU and one of the main out there that was like one of the top rated ones was potentially him being Doom. Victor Von Doom. Yeah. Uh, Which is interesting to post him as uh, a villain, but you know. I think he'd be good as a villain. Well, let's see why not. Uh, um, if, and and if, they're, if they're committing to a, a full-on movie, yeah, kind of like how they did with Venom, because Venom traditionally is kind of He's an anti-hero no, he villain. Is, he is a, he's a villain slash anti-hero. Yeah. And, so yeah. Doom, I think, was always villain, was he not? Yes, oh Correct? yeah. Correct? Oh yeah. So it's interesting that they're he focusing is, a he movie is one of on the, him. the top villains, not just MCU, yeah. but if you were to take all the villains, he's up there. But I'm wondering how they could pull off a movie, standalone movie with him. Without the Fantastic Four? Without the Fantastic Four. Four being involved. Well, I mean, they just announced that they're having conversations. Mm. And I mean, let's but say even they... That, even that alone kind of... If they have a conversation today, yeah. for instance... The movie's not going to come out for another four years. Oh, for sure. Or something like that. Yeah. Maybe three years, depending mm-hmm. on how quickly they push it through. Mm-hmm. But it'd be, I actually think it would be a good way to introduce the Fantastic Four. Start, start with, with his your, story. Start with your villain, yeah, yeah. right? And then go from there. Yeah. And I think that's a much better way as opposed to trying to introduce him to or through the Fantastic Four yeah. because. And maybe they need to get I don't away know from how- the origin stuff. By now. They ha- absolutely have to. So that that's a good point that they already have Victor Von Doom as Doom, yeah. doing his thing, yeah. and then the Fantastic Four are already there. We don't need to see them go into space again, get that reaction from the whatever. asteroid yeah. or whatever it was, yep. or the discover anom- their powers, the anomaly, and yep. blah blah blah. So yeah, the origin stuff. I think because of this day and age, we've been there, done that so many times. Mm. It doesn't need to be done. Same with Batman origin. Spider-Man, we talked about how like Spider-Verse did a good job of poking fun at it and like did it in their own way, which yeah, is great. that's true. So the origin stuff is kind of over it. By now, everyone kind of knows what the heck is going on you and should. how they got to that point. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I think that's a smart move. It could could work out really good. I think it'd be smart for them to do that. Absolutely. Um, and, and again, it would just be a way for them to just, just kind of lead us back into it through a different perspective mm-hmm. through the villain perspective kind of like a reverse 
Thanos experience yeah. where we kind of saw Thanos creeping in. Mm-hmm. This, you kind of, if you can develop him properly, yeah, in a weird way, mm-hmm. you can almost make the Fantastic Four look like the villains. Yeah. When they're actually the heroes, of yeah. course, right? But if, if you can do it where we can sympathize with our character, because mm-hmm. like even with Thanos, he's a great character. Yeah. I totally understood him. The Joker, I totally understood him. Yep. Like we don't want him to win, but at the same time, we kind of don't want him to lose either. Even Loki was borderline. Loki was the same thing, yeah. He was kind of a mixed bag at the end of the day, but at the thing, they've developed their villains quite well to the point where you not sympathize, but you... No, that's exactly what yeah. you do. The, the, the key to it, I, I just, I've been rewatching Daredevil. Yeah. Um. Because for some reason, I decided that it wasn't on Netflix, and clearly it was. Um. <laughs> and Kingpin. Yeah. Like he has a he has a, a tragic backstory. Mm-hmm. Uh, Semi tragic, maybe not as tragic, tragic as some other, ish. but but <laughs> like you get where he's coming from. You understand his motivations. You under you you feel mm-hmm. you feel like you're with him in the thought process. You're with Daredevil the whole time, sure, but the yeah. way Vincent D'Onofrio pra- played it, you're like, I get you, man. Yeah, I don't like it, but I get you. You're powerful, you're intelligent, you're methodical, but once that switch turns on, everybody else but is But you screwed. one crazy-ass bitch. Yeah, exactly. No <laughs> shit. And so if they do that with with, Doc, with Von Doom, yeah. uh, with Victor Von Doom, with Doom, Dr. Yeah. Doom, it would be a really cool way to do it. And again, just like Thanos, Loki is is more interesting, I think, because he just wants to be loved. In essence, he's a yeah. that's if you were to break him down to his core, mm-hmm. he only wanted to be loved. He felt mm-hmm. slighted that he was from Jotunheim and uh, that his, you know, he was lied to his whole life. He mm-hmm. wasn't accepted as well as Thor. Um, there was always that rivalry between the two of them. Mm-hmm. There is tragedy behind him. And again, I go back to Thor: The Dark World, where that scene where he finds out that uh, Freya is dead. Freya is dead. Yeah, that is a beautiful scene, mm-hmm. beautifully tragic scene, but it's a beautiful scene. Yeah. Uh, and so, I, if they do it that way, mm-hmm. I'm on board. And the, I haven't seen Legion. I've heard it's very good. That's uh, I like Mutants? Fargo though. Is Legion meant to like? I don't know. I've never. No, actually Legion seen was it. with. Um, he was with the guy that was in Beauty and the Beast. Oh, uh, son of a bitch. Can't remember. Dan Stevens. Yes, Dan Stevens. That's it. Um, is it mutant-based, that Legion? What does it have to do with anything? I don't no, no, no. It's a, it's a it's different thing. thing, whatever. Um, the watch. Office is unfortunately leaving Netflix in 2021. So, yeah, that was weird. Uh, if you're looking at binging it, do it now and just keep I doing it. I can't imagine what NBC had to pay to get that off of Netflix. Cause well, I think it was probably Netflix, was, Netflix pays NBC to have oh. it. Really? Yeah, because it's an oh, NBC so, property. Oh, now NBC's keeping it for themselves. And like, what the heck, man? Just consolidate this shit. At least that's what I get. That's my gather. Because a lot yeah. of the shows that are on there, like Brooklyn Nine Nine, Netflix has to pay to have it on there. Yeah, yeah. They're paying up the ass for to have friends on there. Yeah, but they you get know? that in dividends. Well, they do, but they still have to. Again, they still have to pay for yeah. it. So I, I don't know if it's a sign that Netflix is, um, you it's know, trying to brain. slowing down on their funds. Maybe. Well, they, um, they do pump out their own content quite a bit. Like, they have a lot yeah. going on. So maybe they don't rely on that stuff. But at the same token... Oh, I think they rely the, on it now. I don't know if you saw in the chive, there was a awesome, like, pop culture, like, facts. Mm-hmm. And one of them was about The Office. And I can't remember what the hell it was, but it was just, like, a certain percentage of watching, like going on is based on the office like we're talking like oh, a yeah. high percent is a pretty high percent for just one single series there's the majority of people are watching and rewatching the, the office. office all the time i do it all the time like oh, i yeah. have it in the background when we go to sleep yeah. right now it's booked on the 99 but we'll probably go back to the office eventually it's, it's in the rotation for myself as well yeah. like i'll watch like Fre- uh, friends not so much anymore i don't know why that one's I, a tough one to rewatch for myself i don't know i watch it start to finish yeah but I've never put it on when I go to sleep. Yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine is number one for that. Spartacus and is one that I do. Spartacus, not bad. Uh, How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, for sure. Yep, that's definitely one for me. As yeah, well. I haven't seen that one for for a bit. Mm-hmm. It's been a bit. Mm-hmm. I think we rewatched it recently. Yeah, but I don't remember. Interesting. Um. Yeah. So that's gonna suck. But that's yeah. 2021. So that's a while. That's Before cool. that, though, Paul Rudd announces he is joining the cast for Ghostbusters 2020. So what? As a teacher, apparently. He's a teacher? In to that. who? Bankman? I, maybe. I don't know. Is uh, this a prequel? I don't know. 
I really don't know. Well, I heard and, the next Ghostbusters really is care. like, is this part of a continuance of this, the new one that just came out? Or is this just like... A, I think they're w- are trying to wipe the slate clean of the new one. Well, apparently... Because it was so I thought Dan banned. Aykroyd and same with Bill Murray have both signed on to be on the next Ghostbusters. So this could yeah. be part of it. Maybe it's a passing of the torch type of thing. Mm-hmm. But in their world versus the one that the women brought in, like the all-female cast did, maybe mm-hmm. that's completely separate. Or it's part of the world as well, is it not? I you know what I haven't seen that one. Neither have I. Um, I can't remember. And to be honest, I haven't even seen all of Ghostbusters two. Really? Yeah, I I got through about, I think I got halfway through, and I was like, and this was years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I retried about seven eight months ago. Yeah. Didn't stick. Obviously, the second one isn't as good as the first. The first, the first one is is, like, is great. unbelievable. But the second one, that creepy uh, pit portrait, was just weird yeah Not like weird, the, the yeah, whole the whole thing was just really yeah. strange and uh they just didn't need to do it like no ghostbusters problem, was a great one-off mm-hmm. this new ghostbusters Pretty i'm nice. not surprised it doesn't really matter they'll pull it they'll put it out some people will see it some people won't and mm-hmm. that's it that's it that's all yeah um i was gonna bring up something and i just totally blanked on it mm. shit oh taika watiti is doing a animated flash gordon Really, which I think is awesome because Thor Ragnarok is essentially Flash Gordon, and he and he made Thor yeah. Ragnarok in the vein of a Flash Gordon esque. So I think him doing <laughs> an animated Flash Gordon is pretty That's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen Flash Gordon? Uh maybe like snippets back in the day when they were playing it on TV. Yeah, like I never like fully watched the series or whatever. But it's it's a cool, cool, cool vibe. Yeah. It's again, if if that was like 80s? if you like Thor Ragnarok, yeah, yeah, it's, it was eighties. If you like Thor Ragnarok, then. You, I mean, yeah. that's Flash Gordon. That's yeah. uh, that's awesome. <laughs> There's also, I believe, a porn parody called Flesh Gordon. Yeah, uh, so that's exists. <laughs> Mind you, what doesn't? It's true. They had a they had a Pokemon Go por- uh, porn parody. It popped up on my Instagram feed as a trailer. Like they didn't show the actual trailer, but it just yeah. showed that there was a trailer. I'm like, that's weird. That's, that's weird. <laughs> um, 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 Toby Jones might be the penguin. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Toby Jones, he was uh, Zoller. Yeah. No. Yeah. Was Fre- it Zoller? Fre- Frederick Zoller. No. Nope, Frederick Zoller is from Inglorious Bastards. Um, Toby Jones, really? the actor. He's the. I don't. I, it's not Frederick because again, that's. He was in Capote. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Anyways, he was in the Captain America movies. Yeah. yeah. He was uh, Red Skull's right man, right hand man. Yeah, he was that um, doctor. He was a doctor, a and then he was he came back in Winter Soldier as the person, pretty mm-hmm. much saying, "Hey, by the way, I'm pretty sure it's Frederick. I'm gonna look it up. Do it because we have the Fact internet. Uh, did check. you know his wife Karen is a criminal barrister? This is just on his IMDb. Mm. It's a did you know page? Um, I'm 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 gonna find it. You keep going with I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you nothing. <laughs> No. Oh, this I is don't. almost as awkward as when you. I left can't look yesterday. at anything either because uh, you, you can if you really want to. That's nah, I got the live here just in case. Okay. All of two people to ask a question. Yeah. No, the lives have actually we have four. Three. Oh, we got three people. Three yeah. One. We've had the same three people. Yeah. Uh, Toby Jones in Captain America. Frederick Zola. It's not Frederick. What is it? I'm telling you, it's not Frederick. I'm gonna find. How, it. how long is this taking you to find? It's taking me a while to find. I'm, IMDb I'm in the wrong Captain. I, a- I'm going. <laughs> Oh, wow. Do, do, do. Arnim Zala. Oh, whatever. Arnim Zala. That's why when you said Frederick Zala, I'm like, no, that's uh, that's what's his face, his character in Inglorious Bastards. Daniel Bruhl. Frederick Zola. Mm. Uh, which I heard an interesting theory that possibly like that movie that they created in Inglorious Bastards for him. Yeah. Could be a movie. It was based on, like, they made it up. Yeah, yeah. Because the Germany was big on creating propaganda, so yeah, yeah, yeah. he didn't actually kill that many Italians, as he was saying, and they no. just created this story mm-hmm. that no one else was able to verify. And so there's that, like, someone just mentioned it, because, like, they, yeah, he was saying that this is what he did, and people were looking well, at him as a hero, but maybe he was just a propaganda piece. Like, here's this Possibly. young general or whatever. Either... Either it, didn't happen, super interesting. either it didn't happen at all, or it didn't happen to that extent. Mm-hmm. It's almost... But you think they just bombed the shit out of the guy. Well, I mean, again, you're up you throw, there. Throw he said he was there for three days. Okay? At night? And he's not going to ah, sleep? Not only sleep, <laughs> eat, go to the bathroom. Yeah. I, I mean, 
by the second day, at least his vision's not as good as the first day. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it's, you know, where are you getting your abilities from? Yeah. It seems a little too shifty. Yeah. Little too shifty. Speaking of shifty, well, nah, it's yeah. had nothing to do with shifty. Shift the combo. Shift the combo. You know what's super funny? Mm. It's been six weeks now. Yeah. And I've had the Desert Island movie and TV question as a topic for six weeks. The Desert Island. Yeah, like so pick three Desert Island movies and TV oh. shows. I also put it up on uh, Instagram on the story, but no one really gives a shit about us on Instagram, so <laughs> I'm like, I'm not too worried about it anymore. Interesting. <laughs> I go on Instagram now like once or twice I don't think any of us have actually answered it fully. No, but we've never answered it before. We never, I don't know if we've ever asked it before. I think it's been asked. Not before you, like even before when you so came on. So fast at one time, didn't she? I think I might have asked it to the group hmm. and Soph might have said it. I don't remember. I Anyways, she, I, I'm just going through the notes here, and I'm like, mm, Fuck, this thing has been on here for a long Desert time. Desert Island movies. That would be tough. Yeah. It's next to impossible. It is and it isn't. I mean, essentially, you just take your top three and of each. You know what I mean? Like, take your top three. Like, if you take your top five movies of all time, and then you just pick three of them from there. So, at least mm. it makes the list smaller. But does it make it harder to pick from those five as opposed to picking probably. from Probably. I probably only have a top five. that There's, like, probably, like... I have probably have like 10 or 20 films that are in my top one. Mm-hmm. And then I have like another five or 10 up to the five. So there's like sub ones. <laughs> have you played God of War yet? No, I have not. On, t- I haven't touched any games in probably a few months now. Like if next time I open AC Odyssey, it's probably going to take like forever to download the new content. I um I played it about a week ago because yeah. I haven't bought a game. I haven't bought a new game since Red Dead. And so I've just kind of been recycling. So a lot of and good games back. coming out. My problem is mm. I'm torn between what console to commit to because mm. I Natalie I, and Bruglia torn. Yeah, nothing no. but I'm torn. Yeah. I'm on a way. Sorry. Well, basically, my computer right now is <laughs> basically basically. So my computer right now is just way too underpowered to buy any new titles for it. Like I literally have to rebuild a new computer, and it's going to cost a mm. you know thousand to fifteen hundred to do a decent new model. Because right now it's at wait. The, why wouldn't you just buy for the, your PlayStation? I don't have a PlayStation. What do you have? So Xbox? I have my Xbox One. Wait, but not why, even, why did you borrow God? Did you borrow God of War from me? PS4. Yeah. Yeah, you have a PlayStation then. I technically, yeah. It's your it's your roommate's. Yeah, but it's, you, it's you use mine. it. I use it, but to yeah, keep okay. to keep loading games but, and dump in there. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't. You, what you do is you just get an external hard drive. Like literally, just plug it in. That's what yeah, I've done. Yeah. So it helps me because I needed one for Red Dead. But for some reason, it corrupted. Every time I try to re-download yeah, Red see, Dead, a, it always turns shitty. That's a tough thing with externals. That's why I like I almost lost all I my actually, saves, too. I actually have been trying to find a used, like, one terabyte PlayStation yeah. 4 just to have for now. Because I don't want to, again, I'm not going to spend the money on a 5 yet. Hmm. But the 4 is still, there's still tons of titles. There's still tons of games I can play. In. But the 5 is backwards compatible. That's true. what makes it really good. True, true, true. That's why I'm going to get it for sure. Well, that's where I might trade in my 360. and Because hmm. now all Xbox games can play on Xbox One. Right. So I don't need my 360 anymore. I've, I have the same PlayStation since it first came out. Yeah. And, and I still have your PS3 good. that you don't use. Oh, you still have my PS3. But it's like, hey. it's jacked up because like the hard drive, I think I had to like reboot it a couple of times. So what did you do? Nothing. It's just old shit. It's traveled. <laughs> Speaking of Red Dead, I found this mm. YouTube channel and I'm going to look for it right now. Yeah. And it's, I found really good music to like read. Mm. Um, music to read? R- sorry, music to have in the background oh. while I read. So the YouTube channel is Z3N Punk or Z3N Punk, depending on if you're Canadian or American. Mm-hmm. Um, a se- he's taken the ambient music from different video games like The Last of Us and Red Dead and mm-hmm. stuff, and he's made like these one hour ambient tracks. tracks that you can get on YouTube. Okay. So, like yesterday, I started reading a new book. And I had it in the background. Next thing I know, 57 minutes have gone by in this hour hmm. because like you just have it in the back and it's like it was uh, so it was Arthur in front of a campfire and it has yeah. the music that plays in the background. So he's isolated that and just stretched it over an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really great environmental music. Mm-hmm. And so I've been trying to find that because the video game ones are really, really good. Kind of like, like loading screens in games too. They have that background music. So exactly, Odyssey, yeah. Odyssey, same where thing. They have the, uh, yeah, but that one's see that one. Which Odyssey though? Sorry, which Odyssey? That one is a little too like in, 
intense. Yeah. Ding, 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 no, ding, not that, not ding, that ding, part. Ding, ding, ding. Which one? Just the slow part. Oh, you mean in the menu? Yeah, yeah. They, he probably has that. I haven't seen him put that. Yeah. But the Red Dead one. So is does really he cool. does he stretch it for one game only, or does he's he got have, a bunch or, of or does it ones. does it transition to another game's nope. version? It's, it's, just, it's not even the game. It's no, just, I get that. But I'm saying, does he do just like the ambient from Red Dead, just the ambient from Witcher? Let's no, say other ones. He does a bunch. He of mixes other ones. it together. No, no, no. He doesn't mix them together. That's what I'm asking. So oh, okay. you go to one video. It's the Witcher ambient music. Okay. Or he's go. got like nine. I think he's got about. Nine to twelve Blaze. Red Dead ones. Oh, okay. He's got a bunch of Last of Us ones. Let's put them um, together. What the hell? Well, because y- they're don't, all different. Don't stretch them. Just there's an Assassin's Creed one that was actually unless he good. has like different levels, they just don't work together. Maybe. Well, uh, essentially, what he does is so in Red Dead, different regions have their own different music playing in the background okay. and sounds. So this one is a campfire. So you hear the campfire going, mm-hmm. and you hear that music kind of coming in and out. Yeah. You hear the wind from the trees. You hear the animals and everything, and it's really cool. So you feel like you're outside in a way, specifically yeah. for that game. Uh, Last of Us has a more dystopian sound, but it's very similar to Red Dead. But it's very common music. Before, I used to put on, um, there's a cafe sounds. So it sounds like you're in a cafe. Yeah. And it's been... Fa- people have found that it helps with reading because it's not complete silence. Mm-hmm. Because if it's complete silence, at least for me, my mind starts to wander. Yeah. And so I'm having to reread paragraphs a few different times. But anyways, speaking of video games, though, that was why I transitioned yeah. from Red Dead to that because it is quite good. Yeah. There's Soph with the thumbs up because uh, Soph knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. Uh, um, 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 um. Me, 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 me. Okay. Um, New Matrix, supposedly, with the Wachowskis. Yeah. And apparently they're going to reboot with Michael B. Jordan. Interesting. Well, I think they were on it Will Smith. as in the, Will Smith was actually going to be the first Neo, but yeah. then he ended up doing Wild Wild West. I mean, it worked out for us because we got Keanu. And Wild Wild West. And, yeah, but Wild Wild West sucks. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Mr. West. Dr. Oddly is lovely. <laughs> lovely. Hello, Mr. West. How yeah. nice of you to bring some color to these otherwise monochromatic events. Is that Brano? Kenneth Brano. Kenneth Brano. Yeah. Perfect. Kenneth Brano, director of Thor and a bunch of other Shakespearean and stuff. And he was, uh, he was in Hamlet. That's right. You know Shakespeare came up with like 1,700 words? It's fucking crazy. Words. Words. He actually yeah. came up with words. He came up with phrases too. Like mm. laughing stock was a phrase that he came up with. Like it didn't exist before his writing. He was. You might like a um, movie, not well known. And it's called Anonymous. Have you heard Anonymous. about it? Anonymous. Basically, it it's uh, it's about Shakespeare. And he was actually an aristocrat. But it was very frowned upon for aristocrats and like royalty or whatever to be part of like theater and that kind of stuff. So that's the one. So he basically, he went under a pseudonym, or he pseudonym, had a ghost yeah. ghostwriter. So actually, sorry, William Shakespeare was... Do you want me to read the synopsis? Go for it, I guess. I'd probably do a better job. <laughs> As royal troops set fire to the Globe Theater, mm-hmm. Elizabethan-era playwright Ben Johnson, Sebastian Armesto is the actor, mm-hmm. is tortured by Robert Cecil, played by Edward Hogg, who demands to know if Edward de Vere, the Earl of Oxford is the true author of the writings attributed to William Shakespeare, played by Raph Spall. Flashbacks reveal Oxford's passionate affair with Queen Elizabeth I and how, in his younger days, Oxford charmed her with plays like A Midsummer Night's Dream. You were in a play. I remember you were in a play in oh Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> you fucking, you, I remember you no, running I across the stage. I wasn't actually part play. of that play. No. There was a sub play or like an in-between shit. And oh, I just all I remember horrible. is you running across the stage with this like chef outfit, yeah. mixing a bowl of whatever the fuck. And it's actually <laughs> yeah, empty. So it just funny. made a clanking noise. Yeah. Yeah, Holy and you crap. like streaked across it. Like you I actually like, had clothes on. But oh, I get that. Yeah, but that sounds run. really. That actually looks really interesting. It's uh, it is very. I think uh, so you finished it. You watched it. Oh, I've watched. This is an old movie. I've watched it a long it's time 2000, ago. 2011. Yeah, oh, yeah, a long time ago. But it was very interesting. I found it intriguing. So it's basically saying that William Shakespeare didn't actually write any of his stuff. He just got that from that royalty. Hmm. But again, I think it's worth a watch. I I have it. Yeah, why not? David Thewlis is in here. Mm-hmm. Give Thewlis. Yeah. Xavier Samuel. A little, a little what slow a at times, I think, but I think there's enough of a story that, that keeps you intrigued. Yeah, there's from a... From what I remember, anyway. History is awesome, man. How long is that movie? History is both awesome and super terrifying. Very much so. Um, but I like I like yeah. any period piece shows, for the mm-hmm. most part. Like I, If it's a period piece, that I'm in. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm almost always in. And period piece and fantasy on top of it, even better. Oh, question for you. What's up? 
I guess. So I was watching. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say because there's not really, there's no period piece future. That's what sci-fi is. Sci-fi mm-hmm. is like the new. It's the period piece for the future. Well, science fiction and fantasy are two different genres. Well, sure. they blend together, and yeah. a lot of people aren't sure. Yeah, that's yeah. I don't know because I think if you go like what is it, um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Yeah, there's some fantasy there, even though 100%. it's a period piece. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, question for you. Mm-hmm. I was watching. I, first of all, I listened to Joe Rogan, and he had Bob Lazar. Yeah. Bob Lazar was a guy that worked at S Four, which is a subsection of Area Fifty One. Yeah. But it's called S Four. Supposedly, this guy was in contact with alien yeah. stuff, alien ships. Mm-hmm. He worked on an alien spacecraft. He said this alien spacecraft mm-hmm. that he worked on had its own gravitational pull. He's taken people out to see when they do test flights. Mm-hmm. There's a documentary called. Bob Lazar, Area 51, and Flying Saucers or something like that. I saw the documentary. It's really interesting. And Mm -hmm. I was talking to my friend Nick in Calgary, who is, uh, I would say he's almost certified genius. Mm -hmm. Like this guy, this guy is, he's a a thinker. He is is just a very smart guy. He called it BS, and so he didn't mm-hmm. feel that it was compelling to him. Mm-hmm. He thinks that it's too much of a conspiracy theory. Why hasn't anybody like the likes of Neil deGrasse Tyson or Brian Cox yeah. or some of these higher intellects in the physics world and science world found any of this out? Or anything, yeah. When I looked at the documentary, I'm like, well, why is the FBI after this guy if it's not true? Because yeah. they've been after him for years, and they've been auditing his friends and all that stuff. Yeah, The documentary was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um what my thing, my my question to you, based on that, mm-hmm. which was then based on the conversation, is if a if a property is sold to you as a fake, let's say, mm-hmm. and then the author tries to pawn it off as real, yeah. So if George R. the example that him and I used was the Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. So he, and based on Bob Lazar, because he's like, well, it feels inauthentic, and therefore it's no not compelling. Yeah. Do you still find something compelling? even though the motive behind it is inauthentic or disingenuous, because that was his argument, that if George R. R. Martin tomorrow came out and said, no, Game of Thrones is real, like this is real, this is not this is not uh, fiction, this is nonfiction, yeah. he says that to him it wouldn't be compelling. For me, it would still be compelling because I see value in the stories, yeah. and I don't have to take his word for it. Like, yeah. Yes, he's pawning it off as real, and yes, it seems then that he wrote it in a disingenuous way, but if he yeah. believed it, then it wasn't disingenuous to him. Yeah. Does that play a role in for you? If George R. R. Martin tomorrow came out and said Jane Game of Thrones is real, yeah. would that change how interesting it is because he's coming from that place as opposed to what you originally thought it was? Which so to it say seems that he's like from it. that world of not, Game of Thrones? Not he's from there, but he just believes that it's real. Mm-hmm. You know, like See, like the Bible, for instance. The Bible yeah. is, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that is it has been proven false, for mm-hmm. instance. And there, there's a lot of contradictions and all that stuff. So, But it's being sold to people as real, and it has been since the beginning mm-hmm. of time, right? Now, whether people believe it or not, it yeah. depends. Do the stories change and are less compelling if it's revealed that the intention behind it was, in fact, opposite of what your initial thoughts of the property were? It's definitely circumstantial. Like you're telling me with Game of Thrones. Yeah, let's just say Game of Thrones. That's very kind of a, out there for me. Sure. And I wouldn't believe it. It wouldn't affect my, you know, my love of the the genre and mm-hmm. what he's what world he's created. But for him to say it's real is very far fetched. Now this whole Area Fifty One, because it's been an ongoing conspiracy for decades. Yeah, his, th- you're his, telling his me thing you, has started 30 th- years ago. That's the thing. It's like, to tell that it's all false, I feel there's like, okay, I don't believe that it's, there's probably something there that's true and mm-hmm. it's just skewed. Just like you said, with, you know, the Bible that it's, there's some controversies and all that stuff. And But think of how many people rewrote it. It's all interpretation. For sure. And it's the same thing with, the George R. Martin thing, that's way out, far out for me, so it wouldn't it wouldn't affect me. Right. But I mean, when you look at it, it yeah. like, um, you know, uh, White Walkers, Dragons, Dothraki, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can find those in in the Bible and other yeah. uh, other works that you know. Even L. Ron Hubbard, he tried. He's yeah. he wrote more. Sci- from what I understand, he wrote more science fiction than mm-hmm. anybody on the planet, and he was he created Scientology. Yeah. And most people that are looking at it like this guy's batshit crazy, right? Mm-hmm. And so, does that take away from his works? Now, I haven't read anything from him. Yeah, but it, it was it was a very interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah. I completely get where he's coming from because for yeah. him, the intention matters. But oh, for, for sure. you, would that would that put an asterisk on how good it is? Mm, I don't think so. I didn't think so either. And for me, the reason is this: 
the the burden of proof is on him at that point. Mm-hmm. And I can sit there and I can still look at, let's say, a, a Jon Snow who's trying to just find his way in the world after being yeah. found that he's not found, but, you know, him living as a bastard and yeah. all that stuff. For me, if he came out, stood on a mountaintop and said, no, Game of Thrones is real and I wrote it because I believe it's real. Yeah. I'd be like, no, it's not. Yeah. But it doesn't take away from, you know, you go down and shit that's going on with these people and individuals and characters, mm-hmm. those themes to me are vastly important and yeah. they relate to me. I relate to them or I've seen them happen in other things, both yeah. fiction, fictional and nonfiction. Mm-hmm. And uh, same with like Cain and Abel. You and I, like we're brothers. The story of Cain and Abel to us, mm-hmm. regardless of if it's true or not, or it's if someone's relatable. trying to say it, it's, it's extremely relatable. And yeah. that relatability gives me value Mm -hmm. and that value supersedes the fact that it may or may not have happened and validation in a way too Uh, i wouldn't say validation because well i mean validity and truth are two different things yeah uh validity on a in an argument for instance is Mm -hmm. one thing but whether that argument plausibility then whether (laughs) i mean it was the first murder yeah right um the first person that that killed another person were two brothers right so that story is very compelling regardless on if it's true or not yeah so this bob lazar thing is still compelling to me in a way Mm -hmm. for the prospect of if it's real now it doesn't have the same themes that's dealing conspiracy theories and there's a lot of stuff but there's one thing that there's one part in the podcast that rogan was saying where there was a picture of an ape Mm -hmm. i think it was an orangutan and it was holding its arm on a branch yeah. and it was spearing a fish. So okay. this this ape is uh, is doing things that humans probably did mm-hmm. at, during the Stone Age. Yeah. So there's a theory going around that what's happening with orangutans and apes and stuff, they're actually advancing to the Stone Age yeah. while we're going on a different, you know, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're moving forward on something else, which yeah. I think is super crazy and it's yeah, like yeah. mind blowing thing. But anyways, it was it was a really good conversation and I'm going to I want to transcribe them one day. Before I die, I told them I'm going to transcribe our conversations cuz we get in deep on a lot of stuff. But anyways, I just wasn't Record sure. If, <laughs> yeah. I just wasn't sure if that stuff ever if if, if it would change your perception on stuff. No. Nope. He did it's, make it's a good just, it's just like watching, okay, today I watched a fake Black Widow trailer. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And I was like, at first, oh, Black Widow trailer. I was just very intrigued because I'm invested in the character. I've seen her. It's already been talked about already. And then I see, oh, it's clips from all the movies mm-hmm. and piecing it together. And not that it ruined it for me, but it's there. They added some things. So I look at it like that, too, where you're saying like. That's a di- disingenuous yeah, representation of exactly. that. But yeah. it still makes me excited about the movie regardless, even though yeah. it's like, okay, these are all fake. Minus the few flashbacks that were in mm-hmm. uh, Ultron correct right so those got added in as well so it's like it's disingenuous but it the theme behind it i still enjoy it and it doesn't ruin it, it just sucks that i didn't get to see the, the authentic thing well and it's not the real thing too right like yeah. if it was <coughs> yeah I, I, it's a it's a really interesting thing because i guess if it's up to the person that's dealing with it because yeah, yeah to him it it takes away like it, that bob lazar story is not compelling to him because he's like right. it just doesn't add up mm-hmm he doesn't buy any of it. It yeah. looks like more of a conspiracy than anything else. Well, uh, and so it's less compelling, which compelling you, is just simply that it's interesting. Do that you think, you're... though, that anything do, to do with kind of the UFOs and the Area 51 that already has a stigma to it, that it's like, okay, how real is this actually? For sure. So he already loses a little bit of credibility credibility on that. Yeah. But to say he worked there and this and that, and then the FBI is like, oh, maybe it gives it. That's, that's the, the validation. That's a that, sure. So not validation, but the plausibility behind well, it, that. It, it gives some vindication for yeah. him, but it still doesn't absolve him on anything, and it hasn't proved anything either. Like mm-hmm. this thing could go on forever, and no one will know. Like the documentary has yeah. got some interesting stuff in there, but just like anything else, mm-hmm. I mean, hell, there's videos on there that the moon landing didn't happen, and those are compelling, and you can look for it, right? Yeah. So it's really, really, really tough. It's really tough mm-hmm. to figure that shit out. But anyways, yeah, I was just curious about what your thoughts are on it, because mm-hmm. for me, again, it wouldn't ruin it. Yeah, but it would just be like it's just not real. Mm-hmm. It would just say it's just not real. I can still enjoy it because I can still like doesn't take away from what these characters are doing, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Plus, we want this shit to be real most of the time, anyways. Yeah, for the most part. I yeah. want fucking Iron Man and Captain America to fight outside in the lawn. Yeah, It'd be awesome. It's kind of like that moment where um, I kind of remember at the when the Force Awakens. Yep. How Han Solo's talking about like the Force, it's all real. Mm. 
everything about it. Like he was the most like against, cynical. cynical behind it. He's like, it's yeah. all real. Yeah, it's real. All so it's like it. that that realization, even for us, that we see these movies and stuff, to wake up one day to find out, oh, it's real. Yeah. Be very interesting. I don't think it'll ever be in our lifetime. That's a no, shitty thing. Definitely not. But <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that like we're we're in this weird era right now where yeah. we are in a sort of dark ages, but in the sense of a transition. Mm-hmm. So when the dark ages happened before the Renaissance or Enlightenment period, yeah. There was a lot of shit going on and the the world was trying to figure out what to do with itself. And then all of a sudden the Renaissance hit and you saw this, you know, what was happening in Florence and Italy and this these new enlightened individuals. And it kind of was able to parse all this and all the stuff that was going on into certain subsects. Right. There was obviously super shitty things going on. But, you know, uh, uh, and this is a Joe Rogan was on Jordan Peterson's uh, podcast. And he was saying, I really do hope that we're in this thing where, you know, 10 years down the road, mm-hmm. we'll just look back and be like, yeah, we were a little bit crazy, but we were trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. Technology was moving faster than we were able to handle it. Oh, 100%. Um, and we just haven't been able to reach that point, right? Yeah. Just like I was talking about last week about, you know, the way people are going to be streaming movies and TV. Yeah. That's why this this theater box office race, which I don't even know if how close Avengers is to Avatar. 35 to no, 38 mil. Hasn't that changed now since they've been released? They just released today. Oh, or tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow the releases. Okay. So as of tomorrow, that's it, when the number that's when will the change. Timing, that's when the, uh, the watch, clock starts. Watch the, yeah, watch the countdown now. There'll be, like, there'll be a running clock of like the mm-hmm. numbers rolling in and... It'll be good. I'm, yeah. I'm going to be one of the ones going for sure. Yeah, I, I want to go. See well, it because, again. again, my brother-in-law hasn't seen it yet, so there you go. I want to see if he'd be, still be up for it, but he works all the time, so it's tough. But, I mean, the, we're in that period where, t- again, technology is moving so fast. We haven't been able to adapt to it because it's moved so fast in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Like, when you and I grow up, grew up, the internet didn't exist. Dial-up. All of a sudden, we had dial-up. But then even with dial-up, everything took a long time to get it integrated into the culture. Mm-hmm. Then, all of a sudden... The, the first Max, I think it was when I was in grade eight, those first colorful yeah, Mac yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, computers came yeah, out. Yeah. Then there was that like almost like a jump in the past, I don't know, 10 years, oh, yeah. 10 to 12 years or so, maybe even more, where all of a sudden technology has just been making these massive well, jumps. Even that, even that five year from when? Oh, look at that, five years ago. It's a huge jump. Yeah. We didn't, uh, when did smartphones come out? Six years ago? Because I know I had the BlackBerry in 2009 yeah. or 10 or something like that. Yeah, I would say so. And then the iPhone I still had, was I still shortly around there. Coming out of high school, you did, hey? Yeah, <laughs> and that was 10 years ago. So. That was 10 years ago. Yeah, it's it's just really interesting. Now. Sorry. Yeah, it's su- it's super super interesting. And this is yeah. where it goes back to the Matrix. Now, mm. out of all of this, it's I, I found a way to segue us back into the Matrix. What would the Matrix shit be about? Like, does this? There's a lot of the stuff that's going on with technology reinforce. The matrix that we were given first, like the, the themes and concepts of it, right? Yeah. Like At least fake from a technological kind of standpoint, not from any other standpoint, just mm-hmm. the technology that we are in a simulation and shit's going on. Mm-hmm. What would they possibly do with a new matrix right now that when we that would w- surprise us? <laughs> yeah, because that was a mind blowing yeah, yeah. moment in history, in film history, and just anything, yeah. just to think like that. I'll tell you what, the for me, I don't know what they would do, but I, we, we've already kind of seen a glimpse of what like how ready player one that's more you mean where you're going to this vr that's a new age matrix kind of thing that we've already been introduced to because you're plugged in you're playing these games that have taken over our worlds we're really we're living in a new reality that we created basically Mm -hmm. and you do whatever you want in them you have a character however you want Mm -hmm. you can look however you want same with the matrix kind of has a same theme behind it at the end of the day you're escaping into this matrix world right living the world you want he's bald some, in the some one are, he has hair some are awakened like, sure some are awakened and are conscious of both worlds and right. others are just like I don't want to remember anything I just want to live in this world blue my pill. life and that's they it blue pill the it. blue pill effect yeah. right so whereas the ready player one and the matrix we saw was all red pill yeah, it's in it's my opinion. really so what they could do in the new one, who knows? There's already the one. Yeah. How do they carry on this thing? Unless it's a prequel. There's another thing too. Think of the story alone. Forget the technology and the and that world and stuff like that. It would almost have to be the creation of how it got there and to well, this, to the first war and whatever. I don't know. They kind of did that in the third one though, when when the architect and the oracle yeah. met up in that park and they're like, "Well, we can do this again" or whatever the fuck they said. Right? Oh, so maybe they're gonna try it again. Yeah, it's oh, no. they kind of fucked it with the with the sequels. Yeah, in a way. Um, because then all of a sudden it's just like it got so into itself and super complicated. Like the mm-hmm. first one was so tight 
and at least to me and still to this day like it's just got yeah. it it's still so good yeah but you know obviously they needed the second the second and third I one. don't think they did cuz they could have ended well, with the first one and all of a sudden he, the but, one is there so the one is there but then what he he killed the that, smith and that's it done. well that's it because he was able to tap into what the matrix was yeah he was able to figure out what it was, infiltrate it, whatever. The, oh, we got 27 seconds. So for all three of you who are on the live show, <laughs> peace out. Uh, and we'll catch you next Friday, not Thursday, Friday. Um, but when I look at it, it could have just ended with one and it would have been just fine because there is a point where you start explaining too much. Mm-hmm. And A, it's not going to please everybody. And B, yeah. you, if you can go like they did, super, super convoluted and complicated and all the themes like the 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 imagery like the Jesus imagery and the good mm. and evil and all that stuff is just like um embedded in there. Do you want to just press that share? Yeah. Is it is like just drilled into your head and you're like, "Hey, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it." That's kind of that's what the new ones were like. Oh, you just hit share. Oh. You can put it just down there. Okay, cool. And then just exit out of there. Instagram 101. Anyways, I think what it might need to dwell on or play around with is the idea of humans being able to build. I think I talked about it a little while ago um, when I listened to the Naval Ravikant episode on Joe Rogan, which is still a brilliant, brilliant episode. I've listened to it three times. But he was talking about how we haven't been able to create a brain and a brain that could live in a certain ecosystem and grow up and be... It's still programmed, like that, that can be programmed and, and grow and, and learn and adapt to its in an environment that's been created for it. Full AI. I, I think that would be interesting because everyone's worried about, you know, technology going so far that it takes us over, right? There's been enough Which movies means, to say that it could happen. Very plausible. It could, but this guy was saying that it can't happen in the way that we think because we still haven't been able to develop a brain, a brain down to a cellular level. And even yeah. if we did, in his mind, it still has to grow in a specific ecosystem. Well, which one do you do it in? Mm-hmm. Do you like it's? It's like the idea of what if you were? What if you take a person, uh, the you know, from Canada, and then you threw them in another country? You threw them in China, and they grew up in China. Mm-hmm. They would they would learn. They would have to grow up in that world and that environment, which would be yeah. vastly different, right? Yeah. So each environment. Is very different, and each one would operate differently. Yeah, which is very to me, it's very interesting. So that's why he thinks that we wouldn't be able to create AI that would ultimately make us completely obsolete. Yeah, but that's just one person, right? Yeah. There's also, I mean, the fact that Elon Musk is worried about it that freaks the fuck out of me. So I, I, I think they can play I, with that. There's enough movies with like the bio, bio like medical problems or like mm-hmm. zombie outbreaks, and I'm like, I that's fully possible because mm-hmm. it's just like how on Jurassic Park it's like you know not the you know when I ask the question like you know whether we sh- you know if should. we can if we should do this like yeah it's it, it's exactly that effect and but ultimately it, that'll be the downfall it's like you know maybe you shouldn't mess with something that advanced like there's even something saying that someone already uh, they tr- like they've made how many of robots AIs mm-hmm even now that respond and react and can there, talk there was to two it. that actually created their own language and they had to shut it down. Exactly. There's one that they apparently there's a picture whether it's real or not that they gave this they sh- they showed this robot how to shoot a gun. Well, it's right. like where we go. There we go. But that's this is how mecha- it starts. That, that, that's a mechanical <laughs> true operate like operating move or that, that's a mechanical movement. Yeah. That's that's essentially you put the gun there and you program it to just move this in like this index yeah. finger. To be able for, for like, AI needs to establish a couple things. AI, if it were going to take us over, and this is why I think it would work really well in the Matrix, it would have to establish a why, yeah. and it would have to establish reasons for doing the things that it's doing. So if you go to 2001 A Space Odyssey, Hal was learning from the people that it was around it. It could read the lips, and that's why it started attacking everybody on ship, and yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. it became evil, right? It became sentient in a way. Mm-hmm. But you have to you have to program what a why is. Mm-hmm. So in Arrival, the movie Arrival, she was trying to explain like I have to establish every little bit of this sentence to be able to convey it to these aliens, mm-hmm. so that they understand what I'm asking, why I'm asking it, 
what a proposition is, what the word actually means. Like there's so many layers to it that you need to program mm -hmm. as opposed to something as mechanical as, hey, Alexa, play me this song. Yeah. That's just a, the equivalent of a person going into this file, click, double click this, double click this, click, Windows Media Player plays that song. Yeah. Essentially what they've done is they've taken out the, the, the actual Middle, manual. Yeah. Part, yeah. The rest of it is just coding. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to code. So yes, you can get a robot to shoot a gun, mm -hmm. but can you... A robot, let's say, accidentally shooting a person, mm -hmm. there's no why to it. There's no reason to do it. It's like yeah. the fucking dragon in Game of Thrones. No one ever explained to the dragon that, oh, this game, this throne is evil. That's why you're supposed to burn it. Yeah, yeah. So when it burned the thing, it's like, wait a minute. Did you know that this thing was evil? Like, it, you know, like it has to know the reason for this throne, right? Yeah. Why is it evil? So it needs, I think that why is something that's, inherent in humans because we grow up in an environment that establishes the whys of many things mm -hmm. right it's like when you're telling a kid like oh put that thing over there well what is over there what is that thing and how are they able to connect it and why and why they should connect it right yeah. um, but even just the act of doing it so going back to the matrix thing i think that is something super interesting that they could tackle hmm. that's my thoughts on it interesting but that's also like me kind of diving more into the technology things. The what would you like them to do? Proverbial rabbit Did hole. Did you already say what you were going to do? I have no idea where the, what direction they could take. I, I thought prequel potentially, but if they move it forward, like you said, where like the architect and the, the oracle, oracle. Yeah. band together, well, we can just try again. Round two. I guess, but I think it'd be, it'd be weird though, because mm -hmm. I don't think they need an architect or an article, oracle, sorry, no. because we already know that they exist in this world. So I think if they just make this isolated story about Michael B. Jordan's character, if that's who's playing, mm -hmm. or let's say our new character, and he doesn't necessarily have to be the one. No, the new, the one. Yeah, I think he just has to be an individual that um, becomes aware mm -hmm. of his situation. Just like the AI like could become Truman aware. Show almost thing. Yeah, like that's a great example. But even like how people are worried that AI will become sentient and be become aware and everything, yeah, which yeah. in some cases maybe they, they, they've said, oh, this is... A, this is uh, uh, it's happened in these cases. Yeah. But now look at a human becoming aware mm -hmm. that it's not AI, but it's actually a human in yeah. another pod or whatever. I think those are, there's so many super interesting individual stories that can happen from there. So yeah. Interesting. anyways, that one, that went off the deep end a little bit. Very much so. Um, I've got one more thing. Did Go you have anything it. else? No. Okay. This oh, one's yeah. going to be... Oh, we did talk about the... We never really talked about the Toby Jones thing. He would make a good Penguin. Oh, yeah. He would. He fits the bill. I think he I, I, he doesn't have the size, though. But, I mean, no, that's easy with makeup. No, he's got the same kind of look out Danny DeVito had. Yeah. Well, kind of, Kind yeah. of short, stocky he looks, individual. He looks creepy, though. Like, he's got oh, that sure. creepy look. So, so I don't know if they'd add the nose. Yeah. Whereas, like, so... Danny DeVito obviously had the prosthetic. Sure. Uh, the actor who played in the Gotham series naturally had the look already. Like, For I sure. I don't think anything needs to be added to him. He just... His A hair. younger version, it was perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, this guy harkens back to kind of the middle ground between DeVito's and the character from... The actor from Gotham. Mm -hmm. And so he could be kind of the middle ground. Maybe not the nose. It's just that he takes on the penguin persona. Well, so. and, but I think all of that is 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 essential to his character. Oh, yeah. Like in the Tim Burton one, it was this disgusting creature that lived in the sewers. Like that so. played a lot into the psyche of the character, yeah, which yeah. that is the most, for me, that's the most fundamental thing for anybody. That is the most important thing is I need to understand you psychologically, not mm -hmm. physically. So... For yeah. Fat Thor or Bro Thor, yeah, it wasn't the fact that he was fat. Yeah, I understood. I I've been in that case where I've gained weight because I've been depressed, mm -hmm. not to that extent because the whole universe was snapped away. But like, yeah, you, you we've been there in mm -hmm. one thing or another. Like that's yeah. what I felt. A lot of people didn't get. Yeah, because it was sold as something funny. But like, think about who this guy was. He was this arrogant guy that called to war. He said it in Avengers One. In my youth, I called to war. Yeah. You know, uh, Loki's anger followed me to Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, like the stuff that he, that have, have been caused by him. And even when Phil Coulson's like, you've changed everything around here. Yeah. Right. So that's why I think it's it's more important. The, the look of him, yeah. but also the, that look needs to translate within. Yeah. If you want to even delve in deeper with the Batman series, most of the most of it has to play with the psychological. The Joker. Almost all of it is. I think almost yeah. every actor and character has 100% the psychological, like, like 
trauma in some way, shape, or form. The Peglin to make him how he is. The, you know, the Riddler to make him how he is. Mm-hmm. The Joker, yep. number one out of all. Harley Quinn is another one. Like the psyche, just that. That's the most important thing. Whereas, and and, and the the outfit or their yeah. look is that physical representation yeah. of their in of of what's going on with them. Like the. Um, Two Face, yeah, it is essentially the duality of his personality: yeah. the good mm-hmm. DA, yeah, and the evil. Where that's the where, Jekyll and Hyde yeah. thing, and that's how DC actually does a little bit better on the villain front than mm-hmm. in MCU because MCU the you know. Well, are you talking? Hold on, comics, TV, mo- like because MCU talk, movies is a little bit different than. Let's talk about the movies more. Than, yeah. Like for me, I'm just comparing movies to movies right now. Okay, and all like the DC movies we've seen and the portrayals of these actors, it's all psychological villains. Whereas, like you know, most of the villains in the MCU, like Loki, he's driven not he's not psyche. It's more just his arrogance. Well, it the arrogance is it's a psychological a psych- yeah, defense. I guess, I guess. Anybody, but like, it, an arrogant person, like yeah. it's not really arrogance. It's that diva personality that he has yeah. is a mask for me. The way that you see it, again, Tony Stark said it. He's a full tilt diva, and this yeah. is opening night. Yeah, right. He wants his name above there. Yeah, he wants he wants everything to be under his name. He wants mm-hmm. the, the crowd to kneel before yeah, him. Yeah. Um, and Loki is an interesting one because you really didn't get that physical representation until Thor: The Dark World, mm. you know, where he was in sh- like shattered, a shattered person, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it is. Uh, you do notice it more with with DC. Batman it's or with, with DC, even yeah. specifically in the comics. For me, yeah, is where you really look at their their internal struggle is externally represented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so. It really is like even the Riddler's outfit. If you look at all those question marks, one could say that he's such a scatterbrain. That's why there's so many question marks yeah. riddled all over him. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, see, I got some shit for ya. Um, lastly, unless you got, you're good. Go ahead. <sighs> Another thing. Every time, man. Every. I'll oh, just time. don't go there right now. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is gonna be short. Oh, okay. And I'm just going to say what I'm going to say, okay. and I want you to respond, and then we can close this shit out. All right. Here Samuel is. Jackson is furious oh, yeah. that the far, the Spider-Man Far From Home, which has been getting really good reviews, yep. like r- great reviews, the Spider-Man Far From Home poster yeah. screwed up the eye patch location. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's on his left eye. It, they put it on his right or vice versa. It's his left. It's his left, like originally. I think it's And in the poster, they put it on his right. Yeah. I don't have the exact tweet in front of me. No, no. I don't give a flying shit. No. For him to be fear like furious fury. Yeah. All I'm gonna say is you're mad about the placement of your eye patch, but you're not mad at the fact that they turned you into a joke in Captain Marvel and took away any any badassery that you had over a fucking cat. That's what you're mad at? Yeah. That is just that's all I'm saying. I get what you're coming for your, from. For yourself? For me? Go for it. It's a pretty bonehead move. I'm like, I'm like, who would, who actually made this mistake? Like, that's pretty bad, in my opinion. That's like, that's bad. Mm. I get his reaction, 100%. He's like, well, what the heck, man? You, you know, how much goes into these movies? And. Well, not so much the posters. The posters always look Apparently like. Not. They need to do a better job on. Like, they need to have more artistic posters, man. For sure. They've kind of done a copy paste of the last little bit. All the independent people on Instagram have some of the best posters. For sure. Like, any of the Hollywood ones is like, come on, guys. Like, you guys are But, uh, no, I, I think that's just a pretty amateur move to not check that. Like, nobody in the how many hundreds of people said, like, oh, yeah, that looks good. Oh, but, wait, his yeah. eye patches on. It's like, if, if he was to wear it wrong in the movie the hell well let me ask you this yeah have you seen the spider-man poster yeah i saw that one well it was side by side wasn't it no no, sorry i mean i just said in general have you seen that spider-man poster not the official one i don't think i paid attention but you've seen some posters yeah if this story never came out that he was mad that the eye patch was in the wrong side Mm -hmm. would you automatically point it out because i wouldn't i I don't pay attention it would take me a bit I, I wouldn't have. I, I didn't actually notice it until he said it. But even then, I only saw that Spider-Man poster once, and I really didn't give two shits. But again, my thing is, you're mad about that, but you're not mad at the fact that they turned you into the funny black guy, and you got your eye scratched out of a cat, and ruined your backstory in Captain Marvel. Mm. Get out of here! Mm. Get out of here! Silly, waste of time. Silly goose. Silly goose. All right. 
Maybe that's what I'll call this episode. Silly, Silly goose. goose, even though it's literally the last thing we're talking about. Yep. Um, okay. That's it. This is another week of the Effort Podcast. Um, uh, an affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcasting Network and its soft launch. You can go over to the Saskatchewan Podcasting Network.com and take a look at other great podcasts from Saskatchewan. And if you, even if you're not from Saskatchewan, if you think we're cool, then I'm hoping that you find these other podcasts cool too because uh, we're all just trying to make it. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at the Effort Podcast. You can email me at the Effort Podcast at gmail.com, which mostly most people don't do. You can find me on Twitter at the F Words G. You can find us on Facebook at the F Word Podcast as well, or just the F Word. I keep forgetting. To all the people that have been uh, playing or, you know, downloading, hitting play, all that stuff on our podcast, thank you so much. And we are almost at that 2000 mark. So I would do this just for one person. We are literally doing the live show for the most part just for Arturo because Arturo is awesome. And I will do, continue to do the live show even if it is just for one person. So the fact that that many people have actually pressed play on all of our episodes or, you know, collectively throughout all our episodes is awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have anything else. No, neither do I. Okay. I haven't seen any movies, so I can't really report on any. Yeah, we will soon, though. But that's it. That's all. Thank you once again so much for listening. Wherever you're listening from, I'm going to get that list going right here. I might just have to... Whether you're listening on Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, Radio Public, or YouTube, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're on a platform, on a platform that you can comment, like, subscribe, or whatever, that would be great. If not, that's great too. We appreciate it, anyways. I'm G. I'm Bass, and we are out. <laughs>